What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you a Battle of the Blades. Today I'm going to be pitting a couple of Knife Real Tailor exclusives against each other, but I also liked this matchup because you could look at their base model variants as well. So I'm going to touch on those points as we go through this. First up is going to be the Knife Center exclusive. Demco AD 20.5 and 3V steel. It has a 3.2 inch 3V blade, 4.5 inch grivery scales on top of a stainless steel liner. And I know I'm cheating a little bit here because my knives are modded, but I'm going based off their base form and I'm going to be talking about their base counterparts. Overall length 7.7 .7 inches, weight 3.5 ounces. Next up, it's going to be going up against the Blade HQ exclusive. Benchmade bug out. This variant has a 3.2 inch 20 CV blade, 4.22 inch G10 handles, 7.46 inches overall length, coming in at 2.17 ounces. Really quickly though, all the specs would be exactly the same, but the base models of these knives would come with S30V on the bug out with Grivery handles instead of G10 and you would be getting OS 10A with the same Grivery handles if you were looking at the base model variants. Also, the base model variants are very closely priced, whereas the 3V variant, and I'm gonna move my microphone a little bit here, the 3V variant would actually be just a little bit more expensive than the 20 CV variant. The 20 CV variant, if you're not getting it on sale, is 159. The 3V variant from Knife Center is actually going to be 189 so a little bit more expensive, but I still think this is a very compelling battle and a very compelling comparison. Both knives have a 3.2 inch blade, but they have a very different philosophy. So the Benchmade Bug Out is going to be much more thin and slicey with a taller flat grind. So this is going to be a very slicey EDC, a very thin carry. Um, and a very fine edge for very detailed type works, gonna slice through your stuff really nicely. That's not to say that the, the either variant that it holds true for the 30 S30V or the 20CV, and this holds true for the 3V or the Austin A. This is gonna be a little bit more robust of a blade, and I'll bring them both up here together, that might help, huh? It's gonna be a little bit more robust of a blade, not as tall of a flat grind, and it's gonna be a more hard use mentality on this blade. Both of these variants, I purposely picked the clip point variant for this comparison, both have the clip point, both have very good base model steels and very good mid-grade steels, or I would probably say they're higher end steels, right? Because 3V is super tough, 20CV is super tough, really good edge retention from both of them. 20CV is going to give you a little bit better corrosive resistance than the 3V. So the 3V is going to patina because as you use it with, you know, citrusy, acidy type cutting, it's going to stain the blade a little bit to show up, but it's just going to be like a patina look. It's not going to corrode away. It, it'll be just fine. Just make sure you clean the knife after you use it on those types of materials and it'll be just fine. But it will, it will like absorb some of that and kind of get darker and darker. Sort of like an acid ash etch wash. Now you do have a stone wash on both of these blades. The stone wash is a little bit darker on the 3V so that might help prevent some of the corrosion for a little while during use. So I'm going to give a tie to both these for their clip points, their edges, and the build purpose, meaning the bug out is meant to be very thin, slicey. The Demco is a thinner carry that is more hard use. So that means depending on your need and what you want, do you want something thin and that's going to slice through stuff? Are you getting into packages? Um, both of these will break cardboard down just fine. But are you cutting more ropes, zip ties, pipes? You know, things that are a little bit more girthy. I don't know. Can't think of a good word here, guys. Then I think the Demco is going to win out in that regard. So I'm tying these up because I think they both serve a really good purpose and they're both going to fill your EDC needs perfectly. So really good steel choices. Um, the S30V, the Aus 10A are easy to maintain, good corrosive resistant, a very well-rounded steel. I do believe, honestly, I got like the third and fourth batches of the Aus 10A so I got them much later. I think 
whatever they were doing in the Taiwan plant, they figured it out because honestly, I've used the crap out of my Austin A clip point when I had it before I upgraded to this one and it performed really well. I was super impressed. I liked it a lot. And again, I, I used the crap out of it because I like to carry it. Next up, we're going to talk about the handle materials. So you're getting Grive Ray on stainless steel versus G10. I think the stainless steel, even though it has the Grive Ray and people are going to think that's cheap, I honestly think it's better because the Grive Ray had a very bi-directional pattern on it, much like you see here on the FRN from Spyderco, and that gave more grip. And then the full steel liners made it very sturdy versus where the G10 Felt, felt better than the Grivery. The Grivery definitely flexed and it felt cheap. Like it just felt like plastic. It, it, I think it would have done better if they would have just gone full steel liners underneath to help give it some rigidity. So I have to give it to the 8020.5 here for the handles because I feel like the stainless steel liners with the Grivery on top gave you that grip, but also gave that really sturdy feel in hand, which I really appreciate how it feels in hand when you're using it. In all honesty, as far as looks, G10 and FRN and Grivery, I mean, really don't have too much of a different look until you start to get into like what you see on the mini RSK MK1 or the full size RSK MK1 where they have the g mascus right they're blending the colors of the g10 to give it some flair or like the mini beluga which has the g mascus right you're starting to get some design elements that look like this but you can see that with you know frn as well because i just showed you the spider Co's have that multi-colored frn so you can get some style out of it to keep it from looking super cheap for me the bi-directional again I prefer that on the Demco. I felt like the texturing on the G10 for the bug out wasn't as good. So right now, the Demco 8020.5 is ahead a little bit. Now let's talk about their lock mechanisms. Both of these have devices that lock up 100%. They both have very light detents because of the type of mechanism that it is. It is a spring of some type. You have a coil spring here on the Demco. You have a actual bar spring here that is curved or an omega spring here because it looks like an o that is in the back of the bug out that works really well both of them have a bar or a lock system that engages 100 percent of the tang of the blade making it very very strong i have a 50 50 with the omega springs i've had two break i've had two that have not broken yet and i have upgraded to the Etsy spring that a lot of people will talk about on YouTube where it actually is a little bit stiffer, really nicely made, and it just feels a little bit stronger in action. I like it, I like the extra weight. I think it's nice because it's not so heavy that it's obnoxious to use. You have the coil spring here that actually has like a mechanism that slides out a little bit. You can see that slid open. And I like this spring a lot. I like the engagement. I actually hit my finger on the thumb stud there. That's my fault. Um, the engagement, really, really nice here. Really easy to manipulate once you get used to it. It does take a little bit to get used to both of these, to be honest. But as far as the way that the lock performs, 100% lockup, I'm going to give that a tie. As far as the dependability, I think the dependability of the coil spring and the shark lock is going to edge out the Omega spring. I keep extra omega springs in case they break i keep extra coil springs in case when i'm maintenance in the knife the spring shoots out and i lose it not because i'm worried about it breaking or failing so i do give the edge there um i like the fact that they both have 100 percent so that part is a tie but again the omega spring for me is a winner here they both come with a reversible deep carry i'm sorry that's a lie that's a lie the bug out comes with a deep carry reversible pocket clip the AD 20.5 comes with a reversible pocket clip, but it is styled very much which, like what you see here as well. Um, not deep carry, but for a work knife, if you have gloves, this is nice because you can grab this piece here instead of trying to go all the way down in the pocket with a thick glove, you know, and it's snagging your thumb. You can just grab it here and get it out a little bit more easier than you can the bug out. I think if you're wearing gloves at your job and you're outside, you might not be carrying a bug out. You might be carrying a mini grip or a grip. But 
you could get away with this Demco because in its factory form, it is gonna be easier to pull out of the pocket. So again, depending on your need and what you need, I tie them both because they're reversible. I would give the edge to the bug out from an EDC perspective because it is deep carry from the factory. So in that regard, I think that it's really nice. Now, here's a little bit of a difference as well, depending on your need, which I think is kind of ironic. The bug out has phosphor bronze washers and has fall shut action. It does wobble like, I mean, barely. It is, oh wait, oh, did it go away? Did I get this worked out and not remember? Wow, so it has absolutely no play. Foster bronze washers, which equates to fall shut action. Very, very smooth. The foster bronze washer is gonna be less susceptible to dirt and debris. The Dimco has steel bearings in the pivot and they're not sized to fit perfectly they actually can move as the blade moves they can move up and down left and right because they're not tight tolerances so from the factory i give the edge both to the phosphor bond washer but but also the fit and finish on the bug outs pivot is a little bit better in my opinion than that steel uh bearing system that you have on the ad 20.5 because that bearing system is going to be susceptible to rusting if it gets wet so you got to be careful to make sure that it dries now for ten dollars you can do what i did you can go over to skiff and get yourself a set of rocket glide bearings that are going to be really really nice they're ceramic phosphor bronze so they're going to wear nicely they're going to be you know corrosive resistant which is really really nice but you got to pay the extra ten dollars to do that which you don't have to do that with the bug out so i do give the bug out the advantage there because i think that's more friendly to a work environment and i really think even from an edc perspective with the access lock and the foster bronze washers like the compression lock with spider co and foster bronze washers you can still get the fall shut action without needing the bearings to do it see what i'm saying so let me know down in the comments who is your winner who do you pick to win this battle for me I'm actually going to go with the Demco 80 20.5, barely. I like some of the things about it a little bit better. I like the fact that it is geared towards a little bit more of a hard use. It doesn't have as quite a thin and dainty blade to it, but I love the bug out. So it's a really hard call for me to make because the bug out is a great knife. It is a great EDC knife, and so is the Demco 80 20.5. So some of it's going to come down, well, actually a lot of it is going to come down to preference, right? What do you prefer? Now, the last thing that I didn't talk about was the ergonomics. They're very similar. You do have more of a cutout here on the Demco telling you where to put your hands, and you do have a little bit more of a neutral line here on the bug out. I think the bug out wins for me as far as the ergos are concerned. Both feel really good in hand, though. It's just, I guess I don't like that the Demco's telling me where to put my hand, and the bug out saying you can put your hands wherever you would like. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, leave a like. I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, thanks for your support. I appreciate it. Give me a follow over on Instagram. I post daily pocket checks out there of all my gear. I try to get different shots and pictures and some videos and stuff up so you guys can check out the gears. After the videos, I do long-term reviews. If you're interested to see how these knives are holding up down the road, I fully intend to keep these. This is a gift from my wife and I love the AD 20.5. The only thing that might change on that is I might upgrade to some titanium scales because I have the other one that has the fat carbon as well. Kind of want to mix it up a little bit now. Thanks again. I appreciate you tuning in with me today, man. Hope all of you have a fantastic week and until next time, peace.